um, 6.30 on October 22nd. Uh, we're going to start the Norton Water Sewer Commission meeting and we're going to begin with a split allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Seems like we were all just together last night at the town meeting. Deja vu. Yes. Now, for, um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be there. Well, you were missed. Yeah. You were missed. <laughs> One other two's not bad, though. Yeah. But we, we kind of squeaked by. We were all right. Yeah, good. We didn't have anything huge, just a, that obviously that little uh, recommendation about the zone three stuff and yeah. some wording changes wasn't much at all. I'm not going to say an easy one. No town meeting is ever an easy one. It can all, all spin out of control. Fly and through it if we didn't have any amendments. And what, any it, was, amendments. it was the counters, right? Didn't the counters bugger up a count mm -hmm. or some crazy thing? I guess it's not as easy as you think. Yeah. But um, let's, uh, 6.30. If we start off with a few um, superintendent updates, I think that will carry us to uh, 6.45. I'm through a few of these. I know we talked last time about the change out for the cost for the call out fee. I spoke with Rose. She says we do need to take a vote to change the, out the existing 175 to whatever is determined um, the best final number. I, mean, I know 240 is what Mansfield has done. I've been told that um, they don't like that number. For, for a better, better day, like 250. So whatever makes it easier for you girls. Is, the office, is it some kind of zen I, thing I about know. the roundness right. of okay. 50 and whatever 40? Makes what is, uh, I don't, I don't 40 think. 40 even also. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing to consider before, if we can make a vote with just two, is this would also change the fees for the fire pump test and the hydro flow test. This has always t typically been based on one person going out with the requirements and the changes that have come forward on the pump test, you actually need two personnel. Mm -hmm. Because you need one to be at the pump to witness the test, and you need a second person to be in the system monitoring the pressures in the system. Now, does that cost get passed on through the people that book the, the right test? Now, so right now, the cost for one operator at the four-hour call-out is the 175. <coughs> Who pays for that? Do we pay that in house? No, or the, the person okay. that yeah, we have yep. performing the test, and then they, they bill whoever they're performing the test for. Okay. Um, typically, we've always lost money on this situation because it's more of a safety issue for us to have the second person out there. And in my 18, 19 years, I can't remember ever getting out in less than four hours when you're trying to clean up the system afterwards. Yep. So we've always had some type of cost incurred yep. you know, on the department every time there is a test. And they're mandatory tests. It's nothing that we can just say, well, we're not doing it. Right. You know, it's for their insurance purposes. They have to be done annually. So there is going to always be some type of cost incurred to the department to make sure that their systems are working correctly. The mm -hmm. ENRs will make sure that they're... So 250 is the number they, they're, we're thinking? That is the number that we're thinking, yeah. Is that, was that, is that comfortable? Is that going to meet the... in the event of any that's kind gonna, of... Uh, that's going to be uh, a good range. The, the highest paid person, if they're out there on a call out, we're not going to be making any money, we're going to lose money. Yeah. Some of the newer technicians that come in, We'll probably have a little bit of an extra there, so it's going to balance out. Yeah. Okay. And like we discussed last time, if I remember, was um, in the event wages go up a little, we don't have to adjust this every other exactly. year or some crazy yeah. event. This hasn't been done in, in 15 to 18 years. Quite that's why the 175 has been. With uh, the input from the, the office. Mm -hmm. Folks, I think 250 is probably good. If, um, if you want to make a motion to um, raise the uh, the call out fee from 175 to 250. Go ahead and second that. And we're going to call for a vote of all in favor. Aye. Aye. Scott was in favor too. He's just not here. Uh, yeah, I I heard heard when he was he was with him. Should we have a standing vote? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I don't think it should be um, as I, I mean, it's 
done now, but I don't think it should be punitive. You don't want it to be super high to try to cover that extra expense of us really flushing out the system. I hope in the future that when the pump state, I mean, when the filtration uh, station comes online, um, maybe the system won't be as sensitive. We know there's always a little disruption, but um, some of that is on us to a certain point. So I think um, I think the, the 250 is probably a nice middle of the road kind of thing. Right. Typically, in the past, in, in the past few years, anyway, we've tried to work the hydro flushing program into the area that was going to be affected when right. we schedule these pump tests. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, depending on you know, who is able to line up their, their testing. Right, and, uh, that makes sense. It, it's made, it's actually made improvements to the flushing program because we can achieve the flows that we do when you have a fire pump run in our unilateral flushing. Right. Yeah. So you actually create a higher velocity by using these pumps than you do unilaterally flushing a hydrant. So yeah. it, it's, you can work it to your benefit, but it can also be a hindrance as well. If you can't get to that area and you disturb it, now it just takes a little bit longer to get there. Right. And, While we're on this sort of topic, um, I remember there was a test done without us being present. And is the, do we have a written up policy for a penalty for that? The only policy a I fee, could I find say. or fee was unauthorized use of water. Mm -hmm. um, similar to a hydrocita going out and opening up a fire hydrant the same type of situation. Wasn't it a scheduled test or something? Or? It was a scheduled test. It was uh, on the Norton Media. It was in the newspaper. It was on both websites. The determination still has not been found as far as if somebody actually gave authority to the person doing the test to go ahead and go early, as I'm told from the yep. fire suppression company. Um, I'm equally told that, you know, that that never happened from the school department. I don't, I don't know if we'll ever find out who chose to go early or, or how we would direct any type of fine or penalty to, right. to either or. Um, luckily, that test is not one of the major disruptive tests that we have in town. Okay. But it, it still did create a few complaints that I received personally. It just, you don't, and, I guess the, an actual, a uh, layperson or water tech or water, non-water system person may not understand the ramifications of what that does. Right. But these people are testing professionals, right. I'm told. Right. So, you know, it's not their first day. It's not their first week. This is what they do. And i got to think, every other municipality has a staff on and a little handshake, a little this is what we're going to do. Right. Sip a cup of coffee, crack a valve. I, I don't. I don't know how that happens. Right. It, it's not the first time this particular company has worked in town. We've worked with them many times over the years, uh, different locations, and never run into the situation. Right. So it leads me to believe that they may have been told by somebody, or maybe it was a misunderstanding. But either way, they went before the scheduled time, and when our technicians arrived, the test was already complete. And they, the, they were gone. Mm -hmm. So they had time to perform the test, wrap up their equipment, Clean up. and leave. Yep. You know, so it wasn't you know five or six minutes before. It, it was half an hour, 45 minutes before the scheduled time. Right. Were we late or no? No, no, we were early. All right. We showed up. We sure. set up set up on the hydrants with our, our gauges and uh, attempted to, to find the professionals that should have been there. And they found an open back door, and the school was vacant. Oh, wow. I've, um, I've seen a few of the emails floating around. Is it, um, has one gone out to the testing company that, you know? Yes, I, I've spoken with them directly. Okay. Um, the person I spoke with was the coordinator. They reached out to the tech that was on site, and that's where I was told it was directed from the other side. Right. That, that we, they didn't know when the department would be there, and go ahead and do what you need to do. Wow. I don't know if there's something we should think about putting in the rules and regulations, uh, you know, as this has not happened before. Right. Um, you know. We should probably review them. I know we've talked about this a million times. Yeah, it's the, the general stuff is pretty cut and dry on what we normally do, but it's these, um, and you hate to be punitive, but in the same note, when there's a protocol and something scheduled and <coughs> it just, 
it's not that hard to follow the standard. And these guys are, are certainly these guys work in a lot of communities, and we're all not the same. We we have different rules, and I think that we're fairly standard with. You need a, a water official there yep. to either operate the hydrant or at least yeah. oversee so I, nothing gets right. broken or done. You know, I, I work in so. I work in many communities, mm -hmm. and it's the same everywhere. No touchy hydrant. Right. Yeah. Very simple. Right. No open up system without right. somebody. It's right. real. It's, it's real basic. Right. Yeah. And uh, they should they should know that. Right. I guess. Um, I made it clear to the, the parties that were involved that obviously this is, is not something that's going to be allowed to happen again. Right. That's as far as I was able to take it because of the limitations that we have in our bylaws. Um, I don't know if it's something that we really need to, to act on. Right. You know, hopefully it was. It a, just, again, a lot of the people don't understand the, the possibilities right. of whatever. Yeah. A valve snapping off, right. turning the wrong way, there's a multitude of things that could be really, really messed up without one, one of our guys there. Mm -hmm. I don't know, we'll have to. Um, There's definitely something to, to think about. I, mean, I know some of, um, as we were talking about the Zone 3 issue, some of the stuff is, is antiquated and does need to be looked at at some point in time right. you know, to bring it up to uh, the new age. Right. I think, um, I think that is probably overdue. Def definitely something that will get looked at it as, uh, as time allows. A couple more minutes. Sure, I've got a few more things. I'll just keep running All right, on. Frank. Uh, lead and copper resident sample bottles. The reminder letters will be going out this week. We've added uh, about a dozen new sites to the existing list of 60, so that we should have no issues with being okay. in compliance um, for the people that uh, weren't able to provide the samples to us in the time frame that we uh, had originally agreed upon. Some of the site locations were changed. Some of them were brand new that were added, and it was all done by the uh, assessor's database to verify the sites by age, which is a requirement for DEP. Gotcha. So uh, those bottles are scheduled to go out uh, Monday, November 4th, and we should be picking them up, hopefully, first thing Tuesday morning on the 5th, and uh, get that round of samples done. Are we ever going to get back to 30? I know at one point it was... Okay. Yeah, it's 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 pretty standard in all the communities. All right. We we change the water uh, from one. We we manifold the two main uh, two wells into one of our plants. Okay. And it kind of changed the the water, as it were, in their minds. So they're making us do another thirty on top of the thirty that we have because of that change that they deem that we're making. That that's exactly it's a nearby right. well, right? So it's the same. It's yeah. the same. Aquifer. Clean Street to West Street, yeah. Right. We right had, around the corner. Yeah, yeah, we had the possibility of putting in a request for a waiver to go to reduce monitoring. The time it would have taken to do the paperwork and get it in, we'd be talking about the plant opening. When you put the plant online and you change your classification of treatment, it requires a whole new round of samples and you automatically go to double monitoring. Okay. So, it was uh, it was a mute point. It was not right. worth right. Good. Even putting the papers no, across. That's that's, that's uh, perfect. Very good work. Uh, hopefully, it's not the it's not worth the end. we're gonna we're gonna do the test and I like it. We're up into seventy two samples. Hope we get sixty. <laughs> that's all right. That good. is that's where we're at. Yep. Um, I talked about the the pump tests. Um, there are a few more tests that are scheduled. Um, I was really reluctant to do it, but because of changes in the sequencing for taking the wells offline as we should have lost a well this Monday, it did not happen. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We were able to schedule two more tests. These are actually hydrant flow tests, not fire pump tests. So a little less disruptive on the system, but can still cause issues. Uh, these are for locations that will need to be sprinkled, but do not have sprinklers currently. So we have to go out with the, meet with the, the fire flow company. We open the hydrant up in that general location Full bore. Hydro pressure only. They, they check the, uh, PO. the, the <coughs> bottle with a pitot tube, usually this <coughs> to verify the reading, and uh, you know, then we slowly throttle the hydrant down, deal with the disruption in that area. Um, one is going to be the end of Mansfield Ave, which unfortunately we couldn't schedule two weeks ago when we had the other two tests up there. They weren't coordinated enough to do such a thing. Weren't scallywags stealing our water from that end of anyway? uh, Yeah, yeah, that was happening. Scallywags. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. and the other is actually going to be East Main Street. Um, 
both for buildings that uh, the town is required to add sprinkler systems to. And uh, this is just uh, the first step. And that brings us up to, to the time. I think um, we're on to you, Mr. Vincent. Ah, okay. You pull up a chair if you like. Oh, thank you. <coughs> Good evening. And thank you for letting me plead my case, throw myself at the feet of the board, beg mercy, whatever. Um, I got a, somebody was nice enough to pull up my driveway and knock on my door and give me this notice here, excessive water usage. And he says, well, you know, are your toilets running anywhere is there anything like that? I says, no, no. And, and uh, so I'm scratching my head as to, after he left, I started to go through the whole house. And I have, in, in, in 2003, I built a hitting ground pool. And there's a pool shed out there. It's about 150 feet from the house. But I have a bayonet shut off. And then I have a connection for my air compressor to blow out the line every winter. And it goes to a faucet at the, at the pool shed. And it's about 150 feet. And, and uh, so I went down to the basement, you know, and I went and opened up the closet where the water meter is. And my, I can hear the right. water meter, but I have nothing, absolutely nothing turned on. Right. So I says, well, so I, I have another outside line that goes underneath the deck and it's used to water the, uh, it's another faucet to water the, the, the flowers and stuff and I shut that off in the winter too and blow that out. When I close the pool I do them all at the same time. So it's a shallow, these are shallow or like the deep? Um, when they built the pool it goes down about five feet. Okay, so it's standard water, water yeah. pipe or whatever. Yeah, it's, just, it's about five feet and then it goes <coughs> all the way down to the end of the pool, around the pool, and right at that corner I have a pool shed where the pump is and, and everything else. And it actually comes up to the concrete floor in the pool shed and then pokes outside. Um, so I turned off the outside one for the, for the deck hose, went back to the pump, didn't hear anything. And then I, uh, the only one left is the one going to the pool shed. So I shut that off. The noise stops. So, then I came back and I talked to the lady here, and she was so helpful. And she says, "Well, have the guys come out and we'll see if we can locate where the leak is." Right. And uh, Brian was awesome. Right. He came out and uh, and uh, first they came out and, and I showed them because I have pictures of when the pool was being built, where the, right. exactly where the pipe ran. And unfortunately, it was all run before they put the decking on the pool. Mm -hmm. It was, it was run when the pool was still being under construction. So it's, it hugs the pool as it goes around the corner. So, so it's that's under. under concrete. Yep. And sure enough, with his listening right there in the corner is where he determined the leak is. So I, I'm not going to be able to fix it. I'm going to have to abandon it. And, I can't afford to. I'm now on. I'm now retired, and I'm Social Security, so uh, that's not going to happen. I'll just drag a hose. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah. So I do have a leak, and I guess it must have been because I opened the pool mid-May, and that's when I turn on all the outside faucets, and so it must have been running since since mid-May. All the way through well, to September. Isn't there a? Well, that's is that the quarter? Well, June What's, is the end of the end of the, that one quarter, right. and then so September May, June, is the other. Yep. And and you know I got like uh, this bill. Yeah. Um, the previous one was uh, 686, 109, and then I go back um, to October of 2018, and that was 101. Six, units? Six, yeah, yep. 633. And, and I can't believe the quarter before that was 101, 633. How about that? Right. Exact same. Right. 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 You know? And then I think that I don't know why this one was so low this year. It was only 43. At 253, that was in uh, 
in, in, in um, September of 2017. I'm thinking, you know, only one year did I water the lawn, and then I got that $600 bill, and I said, no more. Uh, <laughs> and before that, it was 17 it was $89. So, and then before that, it was 430 So if you look at recently, they've been around, you know, the, the, the June and September ones. Right. Have been around 600 and I can understand that because when I drain the pool, I have to lower it below the, right, right. the pipes and blow out all the pipes. And then in the spring, I use the town right. water and right. fill it back, right. up. back up. Unless there was a lot of rain, and I don't have to. Right. And so I had to this year, so that's why it was 600 but, uh, in the spring. But you can see the new bill. I mean, it's more than my Social Security check. It's twenty-seven hundred bucks. Right. And the lady told me I was the top four user in the town. Um, I don't know what to do. Four hundred eighteen. It, it must have been running at a good clip for four right. months, and it's underground, and, and there's no evidence of it ever. No, you won't. I, I never find it. It's I'm in a zone three aquifer. I'm giving it back to you guys. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> if it if it were in a closer proximity to the surface and maybe not covered by the concrete, maybe you would see it bubble up. Maybe not. Yeah. You know. Um, but no, there's wetlands behind me. I know exactly. Yeah. That's the aquifer. Yeah, it took its way. Yeah. 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 That's exactly where it went. Um, and it slopes down towards those wetlands. Down in the back is what. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that was dry because I mow it. I mow. Yeah, it's not it's the going, last seventy-five feet because that's woods. Yeah, it's it's but going. It's, it's, it found it found a nice little vein and it's going right back where it came from. Yeah. Um, the so. problem you have um, is it's a, it's after the meter. It's it was installed by you. It was known about by you, and it yeah. went through the meter. So you're I mean, notice. You know, the, the only thing I, I, I can plead and be on it, I know responsibility says it's not, but it's just I dig it the new water mains mm -hmm. this year. On that. And I mean, the pipe's been in the ground for 17 years, and then all of a sudden I, 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 I've got a leak right after the new water mains. Yeah. I mean, the pressure yeah. might have it's the, knocked a coupling out or something, or? Nah, I'm, if I had to throw a dart at a wall, um, I would venture to guess that, I mean, you probably see the pipe coming out of your basement. I don't know if it's if it's the 200 PSI CTS. Is it plastic? Is it polyethylene? Or is it copper? It's okay. not copper. It's a thick plastic. So it's a real thick plastic. All right. So it's it could be um, 200 PSI CTS. So hopefully that's the proper pipe. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people, I don't know if we were called to inspect yeah. the water line. Maybe well, Brian looked at it. He says, well, it looks good. But okay. He says, Yep. He said, you know, but shit happens in the ground, you never know. Right. Then the problem I go with is installation. Um, yeah. A lot of... Um, what was the pool company? Yeah, the, the pool the companies company. are pretty good with yeah. lines, all right? Yeah. They they live in repairing and installing all the time, but um, a lot of our better contractors install sand around just the pipe itself, and mm -hmm. um, that helps uh, mitigate some of the problems. But if you had... yeah. One well, little rock fracture the edge of the pipe. The whole backyard, because they, they really didn't dig much to build the pool. It was all brought in. Right. And it was all sand from bogs and where, uh, cranberry bogs. And all right. Where, so it is sand. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's taken me years and years and years to get the grass grow because the water just goes <laughs> right, right. right through it. Right. <laughs> but, uh, um, what yeah. We, what, so, we can, what we can do is... Um, Officially give you time to pay. Yeah, um, I can't get any kind of a reduction. Maybe we please. we have the unfortunate situation where everybody my, gets treated the same. Uh, my social you security know? checks for twenty four hundred. That's no. twenty seven. <laughs> right. No, uh, that's why I'm saying it can be yeah. it can be over time. But um, yeah. if um, if we do for one, we have to do for other, and um, you are in the top five, but you're not number one, so we got to watch out with everybody else. You know, I, yeah. I understand, and it's it's a it's a horrible situation, but um, uh, we have to uh, we have to hold the line where we provided the water and you used it. Even we giving it back to you? No discount. <laughs> you're I'm, I'm trying everything. You're, you're, I appreciate I appreciate every angle you can come up with, but there's no. Um, there's, there's no there's no room in what we do for um, 
you know, some people go away for the winter and senior discount. <laughs> that's that's the time to pay. <laughs> that's the that's the um, if we go on. Uh, and what do you, what do you think you can pay, can you pay this within six months? Oh, no, no. I mean, I I, I was having a hard time with the six hundred dollar bill. Right. But I did it. Right. Um, I mean, six, twelve. Uh, that's like four payments, I guess. Right. Six hundred dollars. Um, can I do that? Something along that lines. Yep. Okay. And obviously, you know there are more bills coming, so I will, yeah, I will the, say the the, 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 the regular one isn't that bad. The next one is under a hundred dollars usually right. every year, right? And especially this, we're we're empty nested, so the kids are gone. And gotcha. Everything. So yeah, it's the water bills usually not much. Yeah. Except well, for the spring and the fall. Yeah. Too. All right. That's the uh, no nope. the summer months. Yeah. No, yeah. you're not alone in the. Um, I got you're, you're, a, you're, you're a leader. You're a leader in the um, the water leakage um, contest, but huh. there's no. Uh, there's not. There's any way I could have found out earlier. There was no possible way. You guys don't come out and measure, and you would have noticed. You would not have noticed it on the <coughs> June one, because right. at that time it had only been running for maybe three weeks. Right, and it might have started small. I mean, yeah. I don't. I don't know what else to tell you. It's no. it's a it's a drag with us because you were wasting water during our busiest season where we don't have a ton of water to waste. No. So we're not going to yell at you. We're just going to say, um, pay when you can, and we'll be here to provide more water. Please use it better. Yeah, well, I gave it back to you guys. Thank you. <laughs> oh boy. So what? It's. <clears throat> Do I do with this thing do on the, 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 the mail in mail in your first payment? Um, okay. Frank will go over what uh, what we talked about with our office staff and um, continue to make. So I can split this into five payments. It's twenty seven hundred. You need you yeah, need, you need, to, to, you need to do what so. is most efficient and effective for you. That's that's our that's our way of handling this. I I know it's 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 a huge water bill. I'd, yeah. It's, I think it's, in my relatively short term here, it's the biggest I've, I've seen. Um, just water. Just yeah, water. water. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, lucky I don't have sewage yet. Well, you aren't going to be doing the sewage at reservoirs. <laughs> 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 this, just for the yeah. sake of conversation. I can't afford it. <laughs> no, if, um, if in this situation we are 99% certain it went into the ground, um, you would not have to pay for treatment because that water didn't go into the sewer. So in this situation, this one situation, it wouldn't it wouldn't trigger a sewer bill, uh, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes what the what the guys the techs go out and see a lot is the leaky toilet, the the, the mildly leaky uh -huh. toilet, and then they're uh, paying the, the sewer. The house is well. 20 years old, and we keep it up really good. Yeah. Um, that's why I know that pipe was only 17 years old. It was right. built a whole three years after we built that house. Yeah, the number kind of pops out. We're saying 150 feet. I wonder if it was a 100 foot roll and coupling. there's a union in there. Yeah, there is a coupling. Yeah. And, and he, you got Brian it. figured it was right about where, where it should be. Where it should be. Because yep. he was looking at the distance from the house to the end of the pool. Yeah. And then it's a short run from the from corner of the pool. Around. Yep. And he says, this is about 100 feet here. Right. And he was within 10 foot yeah. of that as well. Sure, at the loudest. So it, it may not be a difficult repair, obviously. But it's under concrete. Getting it's, to it, you may you may be able yeah. to tunnel to it if it's really that close. Uh, it's something it's, to look it's, at. But it's the concrete at it, deck is probably from here to that cabin. Oh, okay. And it street. was right at that cabin, and like it's, right. of course. it's underneath there. Right. Of course, the thickest, widest yeah. part of the pool yeah. deck. Of course. Yeah, of course. And it goes by. Because when we built the pool, I had them pour a big block for a diving board. Right. And then the wife nixed the diving board. So it's under that big block, block as well. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I'll get a hose. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I really appreciate you. 
at least hearing hearing me, you know, you might it's, it's a tough situation. Of woe. It's a tough situation. Um, but yeah, I guess you know you gotta be fair. You know you gotta be fair with everybody. Everybody's gotta get the same the same treatment, and I, I I understand that. But I thank you for letting me do it. No, all. thank you for coming in. It's just um, and payments. So there is no plans for sewer and sewer. Uh, is it worse main street? section of reservoir, nothing, nothing in the near future. Good. Not even gas. Good. Well, I would love gas. I know. <laughs> <laughs> when they put in the water, I would hope for gas, but I wasn't too thrilled about the set of the tree. Uh, the sewer. Sewage, because what is it, 14 grand just to connect? Yeah, it depends on the number of bedrooms and all. There's a whole factor, sure. Yeah, so it's a four bedroom. Yep. Yeah, and then my house is a good... 225 feet from the street. Right. Oh, yeah. And the basement's finished, so everything would have to be connected up to where the septic is in the rear. Yeah. Come, come around. around. Yeah. And then the slope of my property um, is is on two acres. It's 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 16 feet from the street to the very end of the property. Down. Down. And I'm about probably I would guess eight feet down at the back of my house from the street. So I'd have to put a pump at the boot pump system. Sure. Seems like it. And then through over 300 feet to the street. No, well, you're thanking us for not sewer in there. Right? <laughs> yes, I am. Because I'm looking. I, well, I was one crisis at a time. Just to change in my head uh, of seventy thousand dollars to do that. We might, we might know a contractor here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know the people. The contractor built the septic system here in town. And he did a great job. My septic system's a good. 250 feet, the leaching field from the house, you know, that, um, did a great job, but that was 40 grand. Yeah. yeah. A lot of dirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot. We emptied, we emptied a cranberry bog. <laughs> <laughs> that, that 20, 20, I counted 27 of the big trucks came and kept coming sure. continuously <laughs> for like two or three days and you just... Yeah. yeah. That's definitely some material. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because when they cleared all that, which I didn't want them to clear, but the, the builder's crew there, if you want to call them that, the, the kids were having fun with the bulldozer knocking trees down. And they got a little excessive. Happens. Yeah. I didn't want all that cleared, but it turned out it got cleared because they were building the houses on either side of my property using my property as a cut through right. before my house was built. So I could see where they drove the bulldozers through, making yeah. paths through the woods. <laughs> yep. But I got pictures of it, it looks like the Mekon Delta, it looks like a rice paddy. It's just, you know, roots and mud and water. Shredded. It's just all shredded. <laughs> well, okay, I'll let you get back to your your business here. Thank and you very, thank much. You very I, much. I wish there was and more again, we could do. Tell Brian thank you. I will. He's a very nice person. Yeah. And uh, he's a good guy. Yep, no, I'm great. He's very professional. He's very thorough. And he had me turn the water on or off a couple times just to double check nice. when the leak was. He's good at that. Yeah. yeah. Well, this thoroughness was to be commended. Good to hear. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. All right. Have a good evening. All right. <clears throat> so I guess um, when when Rose gets that, um, just make a note on the account to keep an eye on future payments. She knows what to do. Partial payment. And you with the gas, that was awesome. I, you beat me to it. I was, I was, I'm not, I'm not going to move the whack the guy. <laughs> Couldn't let it go. I know. Yep. That's, uh, that's the whole shooting match right there. I, I wish. Well, I know there is a, um, a toilet minder because, um, I, I searched one time after somebody came in with an internally leaky toilet, and there's a, there's like an inline valve, but. Are they, I don't remember, I think they're $170 or something to put on your toilet to see it, it, if it runs any more than like six gallons through the toilet at one time, it shuts the shuts use off. off. Huh. Pretty cool. But on that situation, it sounds like um, Brian saw a good pipe because a lot of times what these people do from my contractor experience, they run sprinkler line or the cheapest thing they can find. I don't even know where they get it because 
my water works people don't have that things work. you bring in yeah. a little thing and they're like how can I repair this they're like yeah I don't know yeah. neoprene fitting <laughs> right this right this is this is not happening mm -hmm. and it sounds like he had the right type but I think you, you nailed it yeah, it's the it's coupling a, it's a coupling I mean, whether it's from from blowing it apart or you know expansion because there was something left closed during the winter and right it's, now it's always it, the it coupling. points to that it's it always the coupling. it's unfortunate where it ended up for him it's Murphy being there. Yep. <laughs> well, all right. Moving, um, moving back over to superintendent. Yeah, a couple more things. Uh, water treatment plant. Yes. The applications I expected from the internal staff has come in for the positions that were approved. The uh, it should be addressed this week. I just want to make sure that. The people that applied uh, fully understand the scope of work that's involved by taking on these positions and titles and the difference in the hours of operation that may be imposed on them as for a second or third shift for an un unbeknownst amount of time Right. Uh, prior to just giving the titles to these people. I want to make sure that they're fully aware and capable of handling the changes. Right. Uh, I believe from initial talks and conversations we've had as a group that everybody was well aware. The people that uh, I've chosen to fill each position, I'm going to single out, have right. a separate conversation with them, make sure that they are 100% aware yep. of the responsibilities and that they still want to move forward instead of doing it as a group. It's a little more personal. Right. You know, um, definitely feel it out. And then, um, then I've reached out to the union for replacing those positions. And right. We will have to still do an in-house post as a union requirement in case there's any other staff that would like to move into those positions. And uh, if not, then it goes external. So slowly picking away at the, the staffing um, issues, you like should say, that we little have. little Bill Belichick we're, having we're your own draft. Around. You've got this guy over <laughs> here. You're trying to fill those spots. Uh, whatever's going to work best for Very the department good. is the angle that we're going for. Uh, providing licenses and everything are in order. Good. And, uh, you know, try and make everybody happy, including DEP. Yep. Because you know, they have to sign off on everything in everybody's position as, right. as a final. Um, we'll talk more about the treatment plant process after, or process or progress, however we work on that. Yep, sure. Um, one other final thing. I've finally gotten a few estimates for the upgrades that we need to do to the garage. Mm -hmm. We had um, a dead short in one of the wires out there, and we lost half the building. So I called in um, Justin Alfred Electric. He's done work for the sewer department before and very good with troubleshooting. And within a matter of an hour or so, he was able to find the circuit, the wire, and the outlet that was bad and had the building up and running. Nice. Um, we know it needs some work to be brought back to where it needs to be. Uh, so we're not running extension cords on, on a few of the outlets out of there. It was it was half done, yeah, basically because there's some shelving units on the back wall that were in place when we took the building over and right. we finished the floor in there. So there was no access to that. So you're limited when you're working on that side of the building. You run cords across, people driving over them. It's just not right. So um, ballpark of around thirty-five hundred dollars to uh, add circuits, receptacles, new exterior plugs with uh, designated lines going to them with designated breakers for the trucks that have to plug in. Right. Um, right now we actually have our trucks way out back off of the second concrete storage building that's out there because it has its own designated feed. Right. So um, unfortunately it's off the camera, it's in an area where it could get vandalized and we wouldn't have any, any knowledge of who did it. Right. And uh, so we're looking to, to do the improvements on that. So we get an estimate for about 3500 on that. If you guys don't have an issue with, no, I think that's, to, to I think that's a wise a wise thing. Is it all um, in the steel building interior? Does it have to be in conduit? Is that where you're? It is in it is in the, the metal conduit. Yeah. Um, Good. That's that's involved. Yeah. There. We even we've spoken with him that uh, you know if the number was not an appealing number that we could actually do some of the work in house as far as laying out the metal conduit. Right. Put some pole lines through. He could come in and do the final final work that's there, and uh, he's willing to work with us. Well, that's a good guy. If, um, I'll leave that up to you. If you think you have people who want to do the, sometimes, you know, you, you have your hobby electrician and they want to use their pipe bender or whatever they want to do, I'm all for it. If you guys are busy doing other stuff, you make the best use of the men you have and do, do what you got to do. But that electricity, I don't, I don't like to take chances with. That's, 
that's just too. It, it's not worth for the for the small amount of <coughs> money that we're going to spend to ha to have an issue out there that could become a major issue. Right. You know, it got to the point where we were shutting off half the building when we go right. home because we were concerned about it. Sure. You know, not knowing, you know, is there something yeah. else going on until we're able to isolate exactly where it was. Um, I've also asked for a price estimate for lighting upgrades on the exterior of this building. It's uh, as you guys know, you come here at nighttime. It's very dark. Right. Um, you know, something that wasn't thought of in the initial build process. As well, don't you guys have those hundred dollar flashlights that Diane bought for you? <laughs> we do. I have a couple. <laughs> <laughs> they ask, yeah, I, we can take. If you get a little afraid half, if you get a little afraid <laughs> halfway and hit the light. Right. Oh man. No, that's um, that's that's well worth it. I think um. And the, the GFIs and whatnot that are actually tripped have little mechanical switches and springs in them, so it's, it's just a function of time. Right. Right. They're, they're made to wear. Yeah, you and know, if, you're, if, you're, if you're overloading them with cords right. and, and you know, putting too much on them, they're, they're going to go quicker than, right. than you would anticipate. So. And I know the, <coughs> the crew you have in there doing a lot of work in there, so they, they, need, the, they need the power. And exactly. It, it's a safety concern. It, it uh, definitely needs to be addressed. And uh, that should bring that building up to uh, what he called NEC code. What it stands for, I don't know. I'm not an electrician. But, right. But it sounded good, so. Nice. But uh, other than that, that's good enough for me. Very good. Thank I'll you. Pass it off to you guys before you fall asleep. All right. Um, you go first. I will go first. <laughs> <laughs> so the sewer project uh, is moving along. They did um, bring in a second crew after we met out there um, about a month ago. Right. Luke. Um, crew one on Taunton Ave. They're they're almost done with Taunton Ave. Um, they should be wrapping that up uh, probably, if not by the end of this week, beginning of next week, where they <clears throat> make the tie-in at 123. That'll be great. So, and then the other crew on 123 is is almost up to Fernandez Circle. So they're they're pretty good yeah, out of the intersection. Getting out of, almost so out of the intersection. So we'll have both of those crews out of there. And do um, they leapfrog once they so connect the dots? So we dogs? met out um, on Thursday last week. We met out there to talk about a plan for what to do with when the crew on Taunton Ave finishes. Um, they still haven't. We're, gonna, we're doing a little bit of realignment on the uh, on the sewer based on the actual markouts in the road. Um, our plan, if you remember, was to come. So we're on the high school side of the road now. As we come out of the intersection, we're on the side with Wendell's and the Yale School and the high school. But the plan was to scoot over, back over to the other side at around the CVS building um, where the abandoned water main is. Right. Uh, we're going to stay on the, we're not going to cut over as soon as we originally planned because where the abandoned water main is, the gas main is right on top of it. Okay. So it looks like the gas company already came in and took advantage of that corridor and, and put something right on top of there, uh, as well as the, the new main is pretty tight to it. So we're going to stay on the school side, um, I think for a few hundred more feet, like 500 more feet or whatever it is, uh, and then cut over. So okay. just minor details, but yeah. it's just something that we worked out. Um, they're trying to decide, I think what they're at first going to do is take that crew from Taunt Nav and we have to run a stub up Mansfield Ave off of 123. Okay. So I think they're going to run that stub, and then they'll probably come over and do the Fernand a stub over to Fernandez Circle and maybe uh, so the long crossings the okay. behind them. And then How it's far just because it's just got to get out of the limits of 123. Okay. So we're just leaving a stub for a future connection. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So they just come across the road and then get beyond okay. what would be the limits of of the of uh, 123. Because um, I know the the Mass Highway people will be ecstatic to get to uh, get out of that intersection. Yeah. Yeah. And then at that point, um, they'll be able to put the lights back on. Uh, take them off of the uh, the timers, put them back on the loop detectors temporarily. They'll have right. to take the loop detectors out for again paving, for right. paving, but um, and I don't know if we're still hearing complaints about the, the time. I mean, nothing's there is, changed. There is definitely a backup. Yeah, there. 140 doesn't get as much dealing time. Dealing with it. Yeah. Um, the road is actually slowing people down also, so that's yeah. leading to some of the delay as far as right. people don't speed through the intersection anymore. Yeah. So maybe there's less accidents. Yes. They go too fast anyway. Yes. Um, so as far as where the other crew 
will ultimately go. It's kind of tricky because everything is minimum slope going forward. Right. So they, if they jump too far ahead, it's it's there's a lot of risk involved, and in, you know things don't meet, and then you got a bigger problem than no. they already do. Um, they're also, I'm not sure, they're definitely not going to finish this construction season, and they're going to have to shut down. Right. At this point, I don't know how much is going to get done after Thanksgiving on the main line. I think they're probably going to fall back during December and do the cleanup um, service connections and stuff like that. Um, they got to track, they got to monitor the weather, the paving plants, all that stuff. Um, so it's going to get more and more challenging uh, to do the work with all of those uh, restrictions. Um, so they definitely will at some point be shutting down and have to come back out in the spring uh, and continue plugging away. Um, so that's the basics there. We do still have to, um, so we had that, we talked at the tailgate a month ago about that drain that they took out right. that they have to put back in and they've given us a price to do it with DI pipe. Um, I don't know that we really have an option. It's, it's, it's so close to the surface. I I, I don't think um, PVC is the way to go. I no, guess. no, it, it isn't. I mean, yeah. we got to do it right. Right. So um, they're basically just looking for the go-ahead to to do the work at the prices that they've given. The C nine oh nine wouldn't work with the with the. I mean, it's like a foot and a half deep. Um, with the traffic on that road and the anticipated increases in traffic, I I, I think I think DI is the only way to go. Yeah. You, you need something bulletproof a foot and a half deep. Is, let's just let's say we're driving over the pipe. Mm -hmm. So, so that's one thing. That I, uh, I would say just give them the go ahead. I mean, yeah. we're not going to call another contractor. No. Um, they're on it, so it's we don't need three competitive bids. Right. No, it, it so is I what think, it is. I think. Yeah. And, and they yeah. can once they. Um, I mean, it's it's to the up to their foreman, but once they connect, um, the. Crew one connects to the beginning of crew twos. They could drop. They'll, those they'll drop back and do one that. Of, one of the yeah. back. You know. Yeah, they, they, that is what. Uh, and what as, they'll do as it gets into November. Now it rains two and three times a week, so I think the drainage is going to be kind of critical in the coming months. So. Yeah. I'd say. Yeah. You know, whenever they can. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get them. Uh, we'll get them to circle back and do that. I'll give them the go ahead on that. Um, and. I have uh, the next pay rec. So we've reviewed this. This is just what they've done uh, since pay rec number two. Um, 126,000 uh, is this pay rec, and we're recommending uh, payment of this. So I would leave that to you guys. To um, I don't think it takes. A, I don't think you guys vote on these, right? It's. I mean, it's. It's yeah. the contract was already right, voted. The projects. The projects, the projects already been voted. voted. Right. So just, yeah. There are five copies. There are five copies there. Um, cool. So, um, if we can get that uh, that paid, we did our first SRF reimbursement request. Um, According to DEP, the money was sent. I didn't circle back with okay. Catherine, but I think she would have reached out if she hadn't gotten the money. I would think so. Um, is Rose back now? Limited basis. Limited right. basis. So the uh, the next thing is we had talked before about the the uh, the DHCD mm -hmm. money. The twenty seven point seven right percent. Um, so we need to get uh, an invoice off to uh, the housing authority. And the way we're going to do it is, you know, because they're paying 27.7 percent of all of your costs on the project up to a up to a cap of the five uh, up to a cap of one one point five million there plus or minus. You know, it's all in the in the language based on your current appropriation of five point seven million. So we're going to um, get them a bill for the ineligible the SRF ineligible pieces. That you guys have already paid. Basically, the design. Right. Um, we'll get them an invoice. I'll work with Rose and Frank to get them uh, an invoice for that, and then we'll start invoicing them um, for the SRF. You know, the money that's being reimbursed from the SRF will get reimbursed from the housing authority, and then whatever we get from the housing authority will get credited against future right. SRF reimbursement requests. So that's uh, that's how we'll work that. So we'll continue to to move the money along um, in that respect. Um, 
And in the um, crew two um, track is not headed towards the middle of the road. They're able to stay towards the high school side. I know the drainage mm -hmm. was adjacent to their trench. Yep, they're staying they're just, they're pretty. Supporting it, or they just uh, when they can. Yeah, we've had to replace a manhole over there. They're basically going down the white line. Is gotcha. where we are, um, and the drain for the most part is in the travel lane, but it's it's a curvy road, so you know they as they jump, go, yep. they jump back and forth. So okay. we've uh, you know been battling a little bit. No, it's quite. We're a in and out of the rock. Quite a act. I've seen them from time to time at night, and it's yeah, it look easy. it's a tough, it's a tough project. Yeah, they, you know, they had. Uh, They're earning the money here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when we get a night where we get more than two pipe. Everybody's happy. Celebration. Yeah. We did And great. they got, uh, with two crews a couple nights ago, one crew got eight pipe in. They, they were no boulders. They just right. hit a patch. Yep. You know, and then the next day they Duncan got one pipe in. The Duncan next day they, they come out, they're all fired up, they open the <laughs> hole up, and right. boom! <laughs> so it's, uh, it is what it is. That night at the tailgate, what was, um, Paul was talking that, uh, John, the owner, came in and they were like, "Oh, we got three And he's like, "Hey, three right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, he used to, he used really to tell want us to go back out and put five more in. Right. Now, now really three, they do backwards. Feet, but yeah. they're, they're begging for seventy. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, Taunton Ave has been really tough. There was a lot. Of, it's not that deep, but the the rock Me. is pretty bad over there. Um, it's not as bad on one twenty three, but we're a lot deeper. So, yep. you know, you just got more backfill more excavation to deal with so um, we had a small win with the mass DOT they gave us permission to work the night after Columbus Day like the you, you, you know, got the big high five school, too all, the all that you just that they kept are, trying yeah. and trying and what was that like seven no's and one yes mm -hmm. they finally they finally broke down and gave us a yes so we're gonna go right back after them for Veterans Day because <laughs> right. the way it works so on a for a, any holiday either on the that leads into a weekend for a long weekend. You can't work the day before or the day after the weekend, right? So for a Friday holiday, you can't work the Monday either. Um, In the Monday holiday, Friday or Tuesday. So for the yeah. Right. The only thing that I've been requested, and you probably got it uh, from Mike Units, is um, there's a Veterans Day parade. I know we're yep. doing night work, but he was thinking about the staging and whatnot. If you could just shoot. So yeah, Frank had sent an email about that, okay. and we've touched base with them. So I, initially, Rocky Hill wanted to work. They don't typically, they typically give their guys the day after Thanksgiving, and they work Veterans sure. Day. So he wanted to request to work both Sunday night, leading into Veterans Day, and then the Monday night after. I'm not sure that the Sunday night will ever fly with Mass DOT, no. I think we'll be able to get the Monday, Monday night like night. we did with Columbus Day. Right, and so the Veterans Day Parade is on Monday, so Monday, Monday night's Monday. gone. Yep, no problem. Yeah. Yep. But, I mean, if he asks, if he does work the Sunday night, if somehow he gets permission, they're right. very clear that they've, you know, where the parade is and right. what they need to do at the end yeah. of the night. I, I just... I think I think it's not going to be an issue because of the night work. Right. And maybe just staging or... They equipment. just can't leave their, you know, when right. I want plates and... <clears throat> You know, nastiness in the parade route. You know, it might be worth looking at the gravel that has been along the edge of the roadway. Okay. Uh, that's been mentioned a few times with some of the motorcycles. Um, that uh, on 123. On yeah. 123. Whether it's from the trucks coming in and out and moving material, yeah. Or um, I've been told it's possibly from the loader with the side bucket. Yeah. When they're bringing material to the trench, that uh, some of it has spilled and it's along the fog line. Okay. So just something I was going to All mention right. to them, but uh, okay. we can pass it along or have multiple yeah. mentions of it. Okay. Um, I don't know if they have a, a sweeper on here. Well, I told or, them we're going to get things good right. and cleaned up for the parade right. anyway. So. That would be, definitely that would be a time to It's going to happen line. anyway. I mean, right. I'm surprised Keith hasn't stopped and he, he's had a little... Okay. So they've got a reprieve. Sorry, it's not for the week, right? Right. Yeah. So, it was mentioned to, be, to me by a rider that I met one morning at, at uh, the Dunkin' Donuts shop. Well, those are ankle uh, breakers. Yeah. When you yeah. get oh, it's bad. kids and stuff like that in the parade. Yeah. yeah. So with the, the kids walking and the people sitting on the sidewalk, yep. it's definitely something you don't want 
to have an issue if we can get it cleaned up. Okay. Yep. I will pass that on. And if they don't, there is um, there's a couple of local people who have sweepers. They have little parking lot sweeping companies. And Sam Marina? Yeah, yeah. But Sam Marina is a good guy, and he has a sweeper. I don't know what they do, but right. it's easier to have him mobilize instead of you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Something. Right. Yep. He'll he'll burn it. In fact, I don't know if you, how you phrase it, but if they don't want to clean it up. Um, we may have to clean it up and build them. And build so them, yeah. Right. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't want any issues. To take care of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's it for now. For the next meeting, I think we have a um, an invoice from the gas company. For the work that they have to do, they haven't done anything yet. But for the pump station, we had to do this for the town center too. You right. have to pay them ahead of time. I just want right. to follow up and confirm what we're getting for the invoice. It's like thirteen grand or something like that um, for the work that they need to do. So probably at the next meeting, we'll um, we'll be looking to process that payment. Okay. I'll uh, I'll get some more information on that. So they. They want a retainer, mm -hmm. and then they install their gas. That's how they do it usually. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Are they allowed to work? Is it because this is a pre-existing construction project, or are they still on hold? For what, the gas company? Gas company. Um, we had to get a special waiver for, a treatment plant. for the treatment plant because the... Uh, Columbia Gas is on Yeah, Columbia Gas hold. has a, uh, no operations right now Okay. I don't because know. of the issues up North Shore. Okay. I don't know how much of a rush there is for them to do the work, so right. we could hold off. If, yeah, if they are, then we won't pay them yet. If they're not going to be doing it anytime soon, then we'll hold off. Uh, I'll look into that. I know the um, the uh, mains are all assembled by the gas people, but is there any way uh, Maverick could be allowed to dig the trench if Columbia is not working just to get the the hardware in? You mean Rocky? You mean for for our job? Huh? Yeah. Um, Gas. Uh, we, I'm sorry. Were we talking about a treatment plant or uh, sewer? So we, sewer. Went, we went both. Both uh, sewer. Leaning towards sewer. The gas line is in now. We're done. Okay. It's up in live yeah. as of yesterday. Treatment plant. Treatment Good. Plant. Yeah. Yeah. You're a sewer. So you're yeah. you're doing gas <laughs> from at from uh, the West station. Main Street down to the station. Sorry, yeah, have right. to do I that. was signing too many bills by yeah. my my bad. That's no. right. Yell at me, giggle. Come on. <laughs> oh, you're slow on it. I was like, you guys have that. I'm gonna let slide. You're gonna let it. I'm no trying to multitask, but I'm not that good do anymore. You, um, do you sign these two or? I don't believe I. Have, there's so a there's a spot. There's four spots. I don't think I have. It's fine. This is the first pay act, right? Scott so would sign twice, but he's not here. Yeah. This is the third one. The third, the third one. Yeah. No, I I've have got the other ones in the car, so. I have not. I That's fine. You would like to take No, the no I don't think it matters. As no, long as the commission no, signs we, it. We got it. The two yeah. of us is all you need. Yeah. So I'll take. You need so how many uh, does it say? I take one, but I'll also take the I one for take, Rocky. You take one for you and one for Rocky. I'll, I'll do the but in the same one. note, if. Um, and I don't know whether the gas company is going to like it. But if, I mean, Rocchio has excavators there. Yeah. If, right. if you can get a pipe crew, and I don't know if the pipe crews are working, they're probably all hands on deck up there, but that's got to be hopefully close to being done up north. So, yeah, I, you know what I mean? If yeah. it's worth a question. And okay. Yeah, we'll see you've what we can had, find out. You've had, you're kind of on an upswing here, Peterson. Yeah, we'll see what we can see, get. See, make them make <laughs> make yeah. say no. Uh, actually, those because it's just in ten minutes. Oh, okay. In ten yeah, minutes, they're going to certify. They're going to say anyway. it's too late in the season, right? Yeah. Oh, it's November 11th. Yeah. We're out. Yeah. You know, because that's what we're up to on our small residential jobs is we're going to start digging the trenches for them. Okay. Yeah, we'll find yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why not? They don't like it, but I mean, the, the world goes on. It really doesn't knock on wood freeze up until mid-December. Right. So, come on. All right, so that's it for sewer, I think. Well, cool. For now. All right, my turn. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, so we've got several projects. Uh, I think the last time when Fran was here, you mentioned Pine Streets. We had the ConCom meeting the night before the commissioners' meeting. We did receive after the commissioners' meeting the uh, order conditions. We're updating the design plans to make sure we just have the information re reflected properly. 
uh, we're doing an internal review. We're going to be pretty much ready to bid in the next couple weeks and um, love to start construction, obviously, uh, April 15th of next year. There is a condition. We do have a, a, a protected turtle uh, by the well, so we're going to need to... Just one? one? There's maybe two. I don't know. I'm not 100 percent sure, but uh, they uh, they order what conditions. A, what is a group of turtles called? Is the spotted it's like a flock. The spotted, turtle? The spotted salamander is one, and oh. then it's the it's a not a box turtle. I'm not really painted. Good at my endangered uh, species. No, not the painted. But, All right. Come um, on. There's an image I can I can send you guys. Some okay. Photos of it walking around. It's not crushed, is it? Uh, it <laughs> alleg <laughs> <laughs> allegedly it hibernates or is not going to be a problem uh, with the a habitat. A certain timing. Yes. Between. Yep. Times that you're not allowed to open the road. So, Scott had this. Scott yeah. knew. He knows all about this, and he, he can tell it. you all about it too. So he yeah. nailed it. Is he uh, here? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm counting on you because he's not here. So we're going to try to uh, do the well work, at least in the unpaved area. We we have full jurisdiction to do any work within the paved right away. That's not the problem. Natural Heritage just indicated as long as we're not during the turtle habitat times. Uh, that we can do construction to the well station. So the goal would be to get that done before April 15th Super. and then move out. So yep. the bidding, you know, in the next month, uh, having a bid opening possibly, you know, maybe maybe after the holidays or something right. like that. Um, I think that having a project out on the street, you know, sometime we'll First, advertise and maybe right. do a First shot second week of January yep. or something like that. Good. Have the contract awarded, be able to start in March and uh, have the contractor, you know, required to do that work before the April 15th deadline. And then work from there and, and go up and, and, and move on out. So um, nothing nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, I was at the commissioner's meeting for CONCOM, and uh, you know we're we're very aware of their requirements. So no major concerns with that. Um, I think we'll we'll be ready to go, and we'll we'll submit it for a final review. And we've been working with Frank on this, so we're there's nothing really major on the water side of things that'll change. Um, Home Street. So we're flushing, uh, hoping to get a um, clean test going for that. Start the services. There's five, uh, six services or so along Homes and East Main Street. That project will hopefully be wrapping up in the near future. We did have an issue with uh, water main break, uh, AC pipe unable to locate it when we were starting to dig and, and install parallel. So we did have a water main break. Uh, it extended down Norton Glen after they had just done their sealant. It seems most of the staining has gone away with all the rain, naturally. Norton Glen has a claim in. Um, we can discuss kind of a little bit of extras and stuff claim, like that on that. Claim for what? The staining of their nice new uh, seal-coated uh, driveway. So the stains from kind of the water coming out, it, it, it created kind of a dirt and uh, rust stain on their, uh, their new. So most of it's uh, washed away. We're in the process of right now talking to some of the uh, nicer concrete stamping do a variegated finish with it, dye i mean we're not going to charge them extra for the it kind of looks like a turtle you know, the top oh. anyway the iron um, <laughs> <laughs> so the question really there is whether or not um, gravity can kind of get out there maybe with a sweeper or something like that they do not have a large scale water sweeper i'm not sure if that's something that we can discuss on on having out there they can have little small hand yep. you know, sweepers Does or whatnot, the highway but. garage have something like that and they do have street sweepers I do not know. Not a water sweep. Not I don't want to do a pressure wash. I'm a little concerned. There wasn't a thick sealant gone down on that. Right. Was, you know, so I don't want to really wash that How away. How big is the area? Um, it's kind of a staining. It's on the side edge of the road. It's kind of runs along. What the, would it uh, cost to just re redo it? The quote is four thousand dollars. So, yeah. Just to just to seal the stuff out. Seal. So that's the quote that uh, Gravity was given as, as the extra. So they're, they're kind of pushing back a little bit that, you know what, the main wasn't marked. It's AC. We didn't know about it. Then the water staining, you know. Yeah. So there's, there's a question on how we want to kind of handle that next step. I'm, I'm thinking maybe we attempt to just kind of clean it and, and see what happens with maybe a street sweeper with some water on it. So a little bit more than the rain. And go that route. Um, I just want to, I'm not 100%, I'm pretty sure that that's a town road, or maybe not. So that, that first few feet is in, so that's, there would just need to be some negotiations, so, yeah. um, and discussion. Gravity is not, they've been pretty adamant that they do not feel that they're responsible for paying the $4,000, so. Um, we can drive down there. We can check it out in the daylight. Uh, it's it's gotten a lot better from the first time when the first time. Right. So. Um, and I understand, you know, it looked really nice, nice and black. Everything was perfect. Uh, I, you know, is it going to survive the uh, the winter anyway? I, you know? Right. Hey, but, you know, we're committed to making sure that, you know, how you guys want to handle it, we're, we're there to uh, to enforce it. So. What about a power sweep up, you know, the, the one that used for mud? The, the, 
a little rubber. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, yeah, I think it needs some water. I, I think no, that's with really, water. with water, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, it doesn't seem that, you know, uh, there's much that, gravity's a small operation, they don't really have a lot of equipment, so. Um, but again, it, since it is a private roadway, uh, well, I, I'm just, we just need to get I'm just thinking if you can get some water system. down yep. with renting it from I suggested wherever. that they go out there with broom during the rainstorm. Right. One of the guys didn't want to do that, I don't know. So, um, but that that probably would have gotten rid of a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And the other thought is that some of the stuff is it's potentially dirt that's ro running, you know, the runoff anyway. So. You, you see the umbrellas and the Londons, the rain gear, and he's in construction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, he takes rain days. Yeah, off. maybe maybe October thirty first. They go out there. Yep. And something that they, you know, Halloween. Get some candy. Um, so anyway, so I just wanted to bring it to your attention. I know that the the water yeah. department's gotten a few calls from Norton Glen, and uh, you know, obviously we have routine age and we can we're not we haven't even asked we haven't even gotten a first pay estimate from them anyway. Right. So, um, which I don't anticipate um, for another week or so until we get the services in. They'll, they'll just do one and done unless it delays a little bit and right. there's some issues with that. So um, I think we, we can negotiate some work with Gravity, um, but they're, they're, they're pretty adamant that you know, they lost some time on the break too and paying for that on top of it is not something that they're interested in doing. So. No, right, but at a certain point it's something in the course of the job that they have yep. and they have been mobilized over there, so can't you just open it up, you know? I don't know, whatever, all right, we'll yeah. see. It's so, gonna rain tonight. Yeah. A little mist. Maybe I'm, oh, yeah. The, in the morning. On Wednesday morning. In the morning. Really it's going to clear at 9. Out. Maybe when the sun comes up, they finish up their breakfast and head out. Head over there, yeah. Um, so I'll relay some information and we'll see what we're doing. They're out there, you know, they're going to hopefully coordinate me by the end of the week. So cool. We'll have somebody out there. Um, so then uh, Reservoir Street, I know that um, originally, I think right now, have you guys cut the check? Do you have the check you're holding? Or do we need to still process that? That was the last one. Yeah, was done. and that wasn't mailed out though. You guys are holding on to that. Okay, so we talked to uh, Mass DOT needs to do the final closeout paperwork. We we submitted it. Uh, it's probably been about a month or so now. Uh, we talked to them last week. They haven't gotten somebody out there to officially. One, one last um, follow yep. up on sure. homes. Did I see the trench across? So they're connected to um, the other side of 123. All of the water main is installed. Okay. They just literally need to go through the pressure test. Oh, the pressure test is cleared. The, Bacteria test is what we need to go right. for the next. So, so that was the tricky through. part, jumping 123. It's been done once and it, did, it passed one half and then the other half hasn't, so we need to we need to redo that one. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, it so actually. So it's all we, the main we, is in. The all the main is in. We kind of angled it a little bit away, a little bit further, discussed with Frank how it actually was installed, got a little bit more information yeah. uh, from the operators on what. And exactly I saw a trench in line down to the eastern line, so that's at the town line. Of kind of stops here with that hydrant. That yep. last hydrant is yours. Yeah. Nice. So are yep. you are you sim um, you, you, you sample in two sections of it? You know, yeah, we're, we're the getting thing? the main feed off of the, the line on East Main, and okay. then we're going towards the cemetery with one, and that one was what the line that passed. The other one goes towards the East and Town Line, and that's the one that didn't pass this last time around. So so we're just reflushing, getting a little bit more flow through that. It's a dead end, so right. uh, getting a little bit more flow and uh, you know, re -te retesting. And is the Glen, the Glen is live around this main? It's not tied in yet, so it's still tied in. The uh, old main is right, still on, no, so we yep. do, that's the biggest thing. Once. That I heard appears. your services later. Okay. We can we can close off. Yeah, we can we can do the tie-ins and then uh, well we can do the transfers and then the tie-ins. Okay. Yeah. So there's a little bit of work to do, but um, just need to get that to pass and we'll be good to go. Good. Um, and obviously, you know, we're we're running up onto November 15th, so that's the whole goal is to obviously finish right. up the next week or so. Uh, it'll take them about a day and a half to finish the uh, services and then get the paving crew out there to do the the, the trench paving for those services. Other than that, that's uh, kind of where we're at with that. Cool. Okay. Very good. Um, so back to Reservoir Street. We uh, we are in a little bit of a holding pattern waiting for, for DOT. There was a, a gentleman that had come out to DOT a couple months ago, did a visual inspection, verbal, nothing nothing in writing um, for the contractor. As a buddy you knows that DOT just came out and said everything looked good. So that's all well and good. We still need to do our process our final paperwork for that. We submitted it. And uh, we're just waiting for their final inspector to come out and say yay or nay. So, um, and upon that, once that clears, I mean, the, the job's been done, everything's been online. It's just really that, that final paperwork where, you know, ownership stops and the, uh, the time starts click kicking on a one-year warranty or so. Um, just need that final 
DOT sign off and, and uh, so that's in the they haven't gone over to C's project I guess to go check that out so I can't go down the street and check ours out so yeah. but uh, hopefully yeah, so. well it's you know it's far from Totten right they can't get there yeah, yeah. Um, so that's just the DOT only has jurisdiction in 123 so it's just that just connection that in that one little Yep, and, and there's, nothing, uh, there's nothing out there. There's no settling. The trenches are all good. And in and August, when we had somebody come out there, that's what they said to, to Gravity. So, you know, we just need that final check that box and yep. go for it. All right. Uh, you know, Highway had paved up to pretty much the uh, intersection right. with their brand new Reservoir Street pavement. So uh, it is just a small stretch. Um, we're just kind of waiting, you know, for the formal acceptance. And, and then uh, I feel comfortable releasing payment. Good. Um, other than that, I mean, I, I think it's. We'll see. I mean, one guy says one thing, somebody else goes oh, out yeah. and says something else. Uh, you know, I'm just waiting for that to come in. And as of last week, they were uh, had they were a little busy trying to wrap some other things up, and they'd send their inspector out when they could. So okay. we'll hold on for that. Um, so really, the uh, the big the big project is the treatment plant right now. Uh, we met yesterday and today on site. Um, we're kind of at a point where uh, we're, we're discussing, you know, what the the logistics are with actual startup, and we've got several weeks of, of water work at well five before we can even start to do that. There was a delay on a control panel uh, from the contractor's perspective. That's kind of pushing things out a couple weeks. Um, that needs to be all wired. We're a little bit nervous about the work that's in the plant. I want to get things a little bit more 100% in certain locations before we even take well five offline. So we talked to Frank about it. Originally, we were talking about maybe a five-week schedule with well five. Um, puts us kind of into a Thanksgiving holiday. Nothing that anybody wants to do with startup and testing around that uh, to disrupt any of the residents in the area. So the thought process is that we're hoping to get something around uh, early December, but we're going to go kind of more on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure. You do not want to take Well 5 offline until it seems imminent that they will be able to get all right. work done in like a three to four week period on the other work outside of Well 5 so that once Well 5 is good to go, we can start bringing water to the plant and start doing our chemistry and then get our 72-hour uh, test running. So, um, I think oh, we're looking at you know early December, maybe mid-December right. at this point. I think that that you know the, there's a few other items that the contractors brought up on on delays and, and certain delivery of equipment that they thought was coming in, and it is what it is. Um, they've had some issues with a few other items, and 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 looking at the plan today, there's we've all agreed that it's not happening this week. And, right. Uh, no. And the thought would be probably that if anything, well, five would be offline. Monday, not this coming up Monday, but the Monday afterwards. So, and we're going to just check to see. We're going to give them a kind of a schedule to complete certain items that we really want to see done at 100% within the next week or so. Right. If those are done, we'll consider having them start off the cleaning of Well Five and then taking that offline to start the work. Uh, in discussions, there's definitely going to be a crane set up over there, so there's no work that can happen inside of Well Five with the electricians and other work until the well cleaning is done, which will be about a week and a half. So once that's done, we can get everything out out there, and then the crane's out of there. We can move forward with a few other items. So, um, no, your your cautionary uh, proceeding right now is is a good plan. Um, it's taken a long time to get to this point. Um, wherever you want to start from, so yeah. I'd rather have it up and running. And uh, I can't say a hundred percent, but I can say um, as it can move forward seamlessly into serving the community. So I don't want to. I don't want to blip. I don't want to hurry in because we pushed everybody or whatever. That just that's that's not how we want to roll. And it's you seem to have that. Yeah, we've heard some some issues with the subs, and and they're consider, You know, they don't want to double up with different subs in the one area. Uh, it's, you know, and, everybody needs their space, and right. it, it's just a, a it's people stumbling over each other may not be the best plan. Yeah, we're looking for the fact that we want to we want a plant that goes through the startup. And there's minimal issues, and we can go through there. We get Mass DP out here to approve it. You know, everything looks good, and and we don't have to have conditions. And and, and they say, nope, we're not ready. And right. It's we're not taking it's, anything. It's going to take a time. minute if you fall on your face. Why not just right. do your own? Um, I'll call them. Can you do a, a sequential uh, or a, a you know trade each the plumbing, run some water through the plumbing, the electrical, run yeah. the run the servers, and see what everything. Yeah, we talked about bringing in tanker trucks to run and, and do some raw, you know, finished water pump tests. Right. Not waiting for actual water coming from right. the well, just to kind of get a few things no. done. 
see what happens. Uh, the biggest thing is that the SCADA panel wasn't on time, and, and that, that little, makes me little, very little, nervous. Little things. Yeah, so we want to make sure that that's up and running, that they go through, they bring all their other, you know, equipment. But that's in-house, though, right? No? It is. Uh, it, it arrived last week, so it was supposed to arrive at the end of September. So that's where they thought it was coming maybe the first week of October. We're kind of... You know, it was last week. That's still a three-week delay. So, oh, so the mass control panel. Uh, that's in here. It's just more of the, the another panel that was attached. That you know, they started wiring things up, and they were we need a third panel. And they contacted the company several months back, and they're like, "Yep, we'll get it to you in like three months." And it just never happened. So, um, it's from other projects that we've worked on. It's something that happens a lot, and we've seen it in the, a lot of the equipment manufacturers are six. To 10 months out on certain things so there's a little bit of a concern when you have an approved shop drawing and things don't come in and then they you know so that's we're just trying to make sure everything's on site and wired up and there's a lot of moving parts to it so that's our biggest concern and, and we've got a lot of input from from, from clients and from the operators that you so know, at this point is that the only item that's missing what else as far as missing um, I think term. missing that would be the thing that yeah everything's on site it's okay. more coordination and getting things timing wise right. uh, there's a few things that we need to work on and what we've offered it to do is to provide them with more of a you know a deadline schedule for okay what does DEP need to see for this startup and testing yep. and what can kind of be you know put over here for the next we're going to do three different startups okay. so the first startup and we're going to contact DEP, discuss with them exactly what we're going to have ready to go, and then see what they need to, as well as just kind of, okay, does this make more sense to go this route? You know, making sure to both both tanks are online. You know, if you're going to fill one, you're not going to want to empty it and then clean it to go through the next round and stuff right. like that. So it's a little bit of uh, more coordination that, that uh, we're just kind of going to lend our hand with and, and make sure that startup is a little bit more seamless than I think that... You know, they've done startups, but this is, uh, they were concerned about setting it up in three different stages. And right. So we're going to work with them a little bit and do a little bit more hand-holding and uh, help them through it. So, um, Good. you know, no, keep in touch, day-to-day, no, -day. you right. know, we're not waiting two weeks at a time. And, you know, we're, we're now at a day-to-day -day schedule just asking them, we're this done, this done, this done, and right. kind of going through and, and I so, think so has giving it, them individual deadlines to help them. With the original timeline that we were talking about, where does that fall? Are we still we going to be delayed, or, or are we looking at uh, I think that's something fairly that, close to what we're So once we get five online, we're really hoping within a couple weeks of that, you know, we take four and six offline, and we get those up and running. They're going to be a lot easier. There's a lot of work at five compared to four to six. So um, four's already been cleaned. We're going to re-clean it. And, and get the new uh, low head pump in there. Uh, six, you know, both of those are probably more of a week and a half to two, two and a half weeks or so delay uh, on how when they can go actually into the plant versus five is kind of more of a five week, uh, six week possible uh, construction period of time. So uh, the thought is that, you know, within maybe a month or so after we get five online that we would hopefully be getting four or, and or six online at the same, you know, same time or individually if we stagger them. So. Um, so what kind of time frame are we looking at, approximately, you think? Right now I'm hoping five's online mid-December, and then we have kind of a mid-January or so with the other two fully online, okay. end of January. Again, we're gonna we're literally keeping on top of them every couple of days at this point okay. because okay. there's uh, there's some items that two weeks ago, it seemed that they, we were ready to go uh, this week for taking, well, um, actually, until today, to be honest with you, we were they were kind of pushing for well five to come offline uh, on Monday. <clears throat> we went out Monday. We talked about a few items. We came out today, talked to them a little bit more after 24 hours of everybody thinking about things, and then they still were on board with that. And then we went into the plant, pointed out a few other things, came back outside and discussed that we're not we're not doing it this Monday coming up. We're going to have to wait till the following Monday and, and just see where we're at. So next Wednesday, we're going to just kind of go through the plant a little thoroughly and double check to make sure they go through our checklist that we're going to submit hopefully tomorrow or Thursday to them and just make sure that we're in a much better place than we are right now. So. Sounds good. There's a couple guys outside, yeah. a couple subs. There's, you know, we're at the end of the job and there's a few uh, subs pushing back a little bit. So we're, uh, they're going to need to do a little bit more of a GC, you know, holding the feet to the fire. And I think that, you know, having our schedule and, and indicating, you know, must be online. We have to have, five, well, five online, December, end of December. Nothing near Christmas. We want it online before Christmas time. So, Good. so we're hoping with a little bit more help on the management side of things that we kind of help them run their 
their uh, you know direct path to getting things done. Okay. Hopefully, we'll help them out. So excellent. Yeah, the scope of work that needs to be done at five is uh, is pretty incredible. Um, that's one of the oldest wells. It does not have an actual generator in place. It actually has a Minneapolis Moline engine in place with a right angle drive. with a right angle drive uh, PTO clutch. And yes. you can supply water, but you can't treat the water, so it hasn't been in use for, for 20 years, but it's still operational. You know, that's uh, the doomsday device. If you had no other choice <laughs> to produce water, that'll start and we, run. We can, we can make it water. happen. That's uh, awesome. So you have to well, look at that. a museum. We need a, yeah. a, a case with the artifacts in that okay. generator or whatever the hell you want right. to so, so that that's has to come out. The stanchions, which have a poured concrete, have to come out. Right. The location for the new generator is actually in the containment vessel in the newer section of well five. Right. So not only do you have to remove all the chem feed, the tanks, and all the electrical going to that, you actually have to remove the concrete chaining wall that's in there take that out so you can get the new generator in and then build a new retaining wall in place, you know, as far as secondary containment goes for the capacity inside the generator. DEP, this is all inside, right? This is all inside. No roof yeah. removal, no, none of that. No, can't do that. And DEP will not grant approval to operate that well without emergency backup power, whereas wells four and six already have generators mm -hmm. in place, so the amount of work there is much, much less than what we have at well five but we don't have the capability of giving them those two wells without well five being cleaned yeah. because we don't have is the, it a, um, the water to give them there. I've, to I've seen your, um, your portable generator. Is that an option? Can you put dedicate the portable generator over there to meet requirements? The or is problem that, with the portable is that generator. Is that an electrical wiring nightmare? Why, it would be a wiring nightmare, but that generator is designated to run one of our sewer stations that we do not have temporary power there. It was not allowed when the, when the right. building was put in. So we could not take it out of service and have it designated there. Yeah. If we had a power failure, now we'd have a sewer issue. What about Caterpillar? Caterpillar would rent, you know what I mean? You, you take two months? You rent one. Uh, yeah. We can I talk mean, about the monthly yeah, You know what I mean? Don't, yep. don't, get, um, don't get hung up on the one generator that we do really there's do a, there's need. There's like three weeks of electrical work in that station, not just the generator. Yeah, yeah. Right, no, I hear you. Yeah. It just, right. yeah. but if that would provide us I'm just, a quicker turnaround, sure. Yeah. And I'm not, yeah. it's not, believe me, it's not a criticism, it's suggestions yeah. to no, those. Sure. Because what what I believe may be happening, the gentleman with the pliers, the electrical pliers get all, well, you don't have a generator yet. Well, we have one coming from Caterpillar next week. Are you, are you ready to wire it up? Yeah. Right. So you know what I mean, and maybe the, maybe the generator from Caterpillar doesn't come, but if you if you give them the carrot and bring them into the stable and say it's time to do your job, sure. that's definitely, definitely this is why you're here. Shop in the plies, get in early, extra coffee for everybody, and let's go. Because mm -hmm. um, you know they run um, crushers and whatever Caterpillar's got whatever you know that. But I didn't I didn't know we couldn't. Um, jump the sewer one around, but that makes sense. Because yeah. you know Murphy shows up, knocks a tree down, and then we need our sewer generator. That's exactly what happens. But yeah, don't be afraid to um, okay. to go out, and if you need one for two months, go get it. Okay. And again, it's not, it's not. We're, we're ready to suggest items to help yeah. expedite get, ar get yeah. around certain items. So yeah, Good. there's, there's a, uh, And that would, ring, that, that would wrangle those trades into, oh man, now I really, really got to do it, that's coming. Mm -hmm. So, get them going. Okay. Uh, so, on the water side, that's uh, more or less it, and no, we're all at the meeting last night, so. That's the thing. Yeah, I think uh, the treatment plan is the big item at the ticket. And any other questions on any other? No amendments? <laughs> I'm going to stand up and then sit down and then leave and then come back and stand up again. Uh, I guess we're good. Um, we need two um, <laughs> two dates at least. Uh, just just for future reference, uh, I am going away 11-3 to 11-9. We want to meet on like 11-7? Yeah. <laughs> well, where, where are you going? Where are you Is going? that in Arizona? Are <laughs> you taking us with you? I can, absolutely. Okay. I'm going. I'll bring home some Andy's frozen, yep, frozen, what, yogurt, or frozen custard, yogurt. 11, yogurt. 3 to 9, so you want, well, the second Tuesday seems like a 12, right? Is that cool? I'm in November, yep. 
So the 12 and the 26, I think we're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do that for us? I did. Come on. I switched my schedule I think, all around. I think you. I, I think you. I think you're jamming me right now. <laughs> do, do we have? Do we have your favorite motion, Mr. Uh, motion to adjourn. We're out. It's outstanding. <laughs>